I want to introduce you to some of the icons that you will see that will be available to you no matter what version of Ecamm that you're using as a quick access feature. You'll see this on your main screen. So I'm going to share my screen now with you so you can see those options. Your preferences are really going to dictate what things you see on the screen, what things you do not and how your show operates. So let's dive into that specifically. Here we are on the general tab, and this is going to go through all of the basic settings that you need to use when it comes to using Ecamm Live. I highly encourage you to follow along with some of the things that I have checked, even though they may not be fully explained because there are things that only make sense as we get later into some of the advanced options that you can do within Ecamm. I just encourage you to go ahead and make those changes currently. You can always come back and change them as you see fit or you decide you want to do something differently for your show. The first thing that I would say change is the play app sounds. And as you get a like or a heart or a comment, especially you'll hear this kind of a kind of a pop sound. And as you get a comment after comment after comment, you'll be trying to figure out what is this noise that I'm hearing that the audience is hearing. And that's a for sure sign that you are brand new to Ecamm because most people haven't adjusted their preferences. You can leave it checked. If you prefer to hear those sounds, I encourage you to go ahead and deselect it. The next thing is going to be show animated reactions. So whether you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, even as you're getting thumbs up, as you're getting hearts and things like that, that helps with that back and forth communication in a live show. So I encourage you to go ahead and leave that check and you'll see that actual thumbs up fly on the screen on your end. Your audience won't see it, but you will. And I think that's just nice when you're going through your show. Some of these other options are things that I find to be very helpful. If you do any kind of training content, now if you're doing it kind of live streams or anything like that, the next one I do want to point out is that you hide the comments automatically after 39 seconds. Now, 39 seconds seems like a little bit of a bizarre number, but I found that it is the most natural time frame progression. When you bring a comment up, you're actively reading it or responding to it. It gives your audience time to see what it is or what that relevant point that we've now transitioned the conversation into. And then it automatically fades off. That makes sure that you don't have to actually deselect that comment to make sure that it goes away. Ecamm would automatically fly that out for you. And we can go into the comments area a little bit later so that you have control over that. When you come over here to the stream tab, you'll see that your stream size, the actual size or resolution of your live stream can vary from 540p at a very low resolution to 1080p, which is a standard high definition, 1440p, which is a 2K resolution or all the way up to a 4K live stream. When it comes to the stream shape, that aspect ratio can go from a 2 1, which is an extra wide, a square, a tall, even some 360 camera operations are available. When you come down to the frame rate, I would encourage you to choose what your actual camera is using based on you using a mirrorless camera. If you're using a webcam, 30 frames per second is a good place to be. We also have two options that are able to be selected or deselected at any time, which is the use the high quality video mode, as well as the use high quality audio mode. You do want to take into an account the performance or the ability of your current computer. And when you come down here to the recording file format, you can choose whether you want that to be an MP4 or an MOV file. If you're curious where those saved video files from your live stream would be back on your general tab down here, where it says choose recording folder, you will be able to actually select where you want to save those files to your computer or an external hard drive. Next, we have the video tab, and this is where things really start to get fun because this is going to be how your show operates. You have the default source mode here. I have mine selected to my camera. So no matter what I do, if I start a new scene, it's always going to come to the camera. You can have it go to a blank screen or a screen share. I think camera is best because that's usually where you want to go unless you choose to do something different. Ecamm has built into it a couple different transition options. Mine currently and has always been set to cross dissolve. I find that looks most normally and naturally as you're doing a show, but you have things like the slow cross dissolve um, or slower cross dissolve, a white flash, a wipe, uh, cross zoom, light rays, a couple things. So let's play around with this. So let's try light rays just so you can see what that looks like if I'm transitioning back to my main one. And so it'll go from here to that. And so it's a built in transition. I think that one's a little bit jarring, but let's start with the swipe and see what that one looks like as well. And so that one looks pretty okay. So that one's something that could be pretty good for if you're doing tutorials or trainings and let's try a slow cross dissolve. 
So that feels a little bit slow. You can keep talking and maintain things as you're transitioning through. Uh, and then that slower cross dissolve is going to be even slower just to make it a little feel a little bit more natural. But that to me feels very, very, very slow. So it depends on the nature of your show. For me, I just prefer a good cross dissolve to go from one to the next just so that it's not jarring or it doesn't feel harsh as you're going from screen to screen. These are other options that are available in this specific tab the fade when the video is finished so it'll take about a second or so maybe half of a second and then it'll actually fade out when you're done with the live stream and i find that this gives just a nice finished quality to things um, everything on here is checked for me again feel free to check out the support tabs and dive into why you may or may not want to use some of these i encourage you to probably check all of these this last one down here disable the built-in camera this is something that becomes now very optional. If you're going through your show and you notice that you don't like having your built-in Mac webcam available, you probably want to disable this. In the audio tab here, you'll notice that there aren't really a ton of check boxes. It really goes into options here. When it comes to the speakers, what should the audio come from? A lot of the Ecamm community uses the Rodecaster Pro to maintain all of the audio features and things like that. When it comes to maybe bringing in a phone call or bringing in um, audio from let's say clubhouse or another application when it comes to the broadcast the system audio if you're going to share your screen and you're going to play videos or you want to share training videos or something like that from a website i encourage you to when sharing the screen option select it so that you also get audio from your computer the option to automatically mute your microphone and the guests during video playback is an option. If you know that when you're playing a video, most of the time, I say if it's 90% or more, then at this point, you want to go ahead and check this. If you know that it, you're never going to talk your guest and yourself while you're playing a video, no active commentary over, you can go ahead and check this for me. Most of the time it is something that I'm actively playing in the video. So let's say we're doing camera reviews or microphone reviews. We're going to show and, and pause and go through and zoom in all these different things to really get the impact of the video with the audience. But that is something that I know I'm going to do in the stream. So mine is not checked. So depending on what you envision for your show is going to dictate whether you have that checked or not. This next area here is a little advanced and this is the microphone delay. Depending on the microphone source that you use, now maybe what programs you all have going on in the camera sources and all these different things. Sometimes you may notice that your audio and your video is out of sync. This isn't an Ecamm specific thing, but this tool is built into Ecamm to help. For some reason, some cameras and some microphones introduce a delay when it's transferring that information. One way that you can kind of help with that is just making sure you're using really good HDMI and USB-C type cables. Most people, if you're using something like a Sony or maybe something like a Canon mirrorless camera, you may notice a very slight delay in your words uh, coming out a little bit faster than your mouth moving. If you see that or if you notice that, then you can change this to about three or four. Usually we'll adjust for that so that your audio and video is in sync. But most of the time, most microphones and videos are already in sync, so you don't have to change that. These next two options I have unchecked here for map input channels one and two and mute movie sound on speakers. These are not things that you probably will ever need to check, but these are options that are available to you. But I do encourage you most of the time, like probably 99% of the time, if you're doing a show, you want to wear headphones to make sure you're hearing the audio. You're making sure things aren't too loud or too soft. And you can also manage the audio from your guests. And we'll get into that when it comes into best practices when inviting a guest into your stream. So that's usually going to fix most of the issues that you may have with audio, wearing headphones and going off of Ecamm's best practices. So now we're into a little bit of some of the advanced preferences that will make more sense as we go into some of the very specific areas within Ecamm Live. And that first one is going to be the interview tab. This interview tab is going to make the most sense when you start inviting guests using your link for them to join. When it says play the ring chime, it has a little bit of a little chime sound so that when they call in, you hear a noise. Now, this is something that your audience can hear too. So if you have that selected, they will actively hear when somebody is calling in. I've decided to turn this off when I'm doing a show because not always will I necessarily have enough spaces maybe for somebody to join or more people are calling in at once. And that just becomes something that becomes distracting to your overall live show. Auto answer guests is something that I probably never turn on personally. 
And this is something that if you know you're only sending your link out to certain people, this may be fine, but I always wanna be able to answer and know when somebody's coming into the show versus kind of feeling a little bit off guard. And this will help, uh, especially if you're opening up the doors to your community to join you on the show, to make sure that you're able to manage who's coming in, who's going and things like that with your show. The other thing that I have is send the guests to the green room. This means that they will sit and they'll be in a place where you can see them, your audience cannot, and you'll be able to see if that person is necessarily ready or not, if they're still taking a drink of water or whatever's going on in the background. And then I love this other option, which is to lower the music and the movie sounds when the guests and you are off in the off air mode. So this lowers the volume of the video so that you and your guests or whoever's joining you or your co host you all can hear each other, but you can also still hear the audio and that makes sure that your guests are getting the best environment and your audience is getting the best experience when they're watching that video. And this is all happening live. This next option is going to be really helpful if you're going into sharing screens or things like that, especially if you're doing uh, tutorials or things like that. I have just about everything on this screen checked. Again, feel free to pause and take a look, read more in details about this if you need to on some of the support pages, but include the desktop icons, the desktop picture, things like that. All of those things are checked. Now, when it comes to optimize for better quality versus a higher frame rate, I choose better quality all the way over to the left here include the mouse cursor. So as I'm going through and even showing you this video, you can actually see where my mouse is. So it's not invisible. So if you want that, you can have that there. You can adjust your mouse size. I keep everything for the most part, very normal. So it doesn't feel weird when you're doing your live show and show the mouse clicks. That's helpful as well, because if I'm clicking on something, you'll see that circle just so as your audience is following along with you on screen, they know when you actively clicked on something, if you're showing them how to do something. The other and last area here is the show everything when sharing the entire screen. So if you're deciding to share the entire screen, that again, makes it very helpful. You have a lot of customization options when you're using Ecamm. Don't ever feel like you're stuck with in one mode or the other. You can always change any of these settings or preferences as you grow your show. And as your vision for your show changes, you're never stuck in one specific mode or the other, but these are some of the best preferences when you first are getting started with Ecamm and even as you're continuing to set up more advanced streams.